Hello. Hi. Welcome. Only one minute late. <laughs> I'll just wait a second until everyone has a chance to join before I start talking about everything. I've got lots of things here ready to show and things to talk about. Hopefully um, it'll be interesting for you. Hello. Welcome. Lovely to see you. I have shared this um, live with my group as well, my Facebook group. So hello if you're watching from there. Hi, lovely to see some people popping on. Excellent. Sorry, I had to change the time. I did plan to do it at 9.30 this morning, but something popped up I had to deal with. So it's now, now. But um, hopefully you can catch up if you missed it. Just missed. If this time doesn't suit you, you'll catch up later on. Ah, oh, good start. Hello, hello. Hi, hi. <laughs> hello, hi. Oh, you poon. That's a long way away. Must be nice and warm up there. It's freezing down here. <laughs> hi, hi, Vicky. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so I am just back from Launceston. Launceston, I beg your pardon. Um, I was there last Thursday to Monday. Arrived Thursday, left on Monday um, for a Yarn Creative Australia retreat, yarn retreat. Hi, Rhonda, how are you? <laughs> Hi Elizabeth, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Another you. Oh, Cold and Yipoon as well. <laughs> hi Geraldine, welcome. So yes, I thought I might just tell you a little bit about that. If you've never been to a yarn retreat before, what it was like, what I did. And um, yeah, the fun times that we had. So um, Yarn Creative Australia is run by Kylie, um, who hails from Queensland. And she organises retreats all around Australia. So I did one earlier this year in March at the Rossa Valley. I'm doing another one coming up in September in the Blue Mountains. And another one in Queensland in October at O'Reilly's. But this one was in Launceston. And it was at the Peppers Silo Hotel. And this is a, an amazing hotel. It's on the Tamar River. And it's just walking distance across the little footbridge over the river into the city of Launceston. Um, but it's old grain silos. So four huge grain silos um, have been converted into this hotel. So everything is circular. You know, um, my workshop room was half of a circle because they've kept the concrete walls of the of the um, silos as, as the outlines of the buildings. And everything in the buildings is circular. Not everything, but, you know, all the lights are circular and... Um, a lot of the, room, the rooms that you stay in are circular too. Like my, my room that I stayed in was um, half of a silo, so this huge curved wall. It was amazing. It was a really, really amazing place. And the food was incredible too. They've got some um, very good chefs there. A lovely kitchen that was, you know, I ate breakfast, lunch and dinner <laughs> one of the time. We did venture into the city a couple of times for dinner, but... Um, yeah, it was a really, really fun venue, really lovely people and relatively new, so everything was very fresh. <laughs> cold in Hobart, yes. Um, it was cold in Launceston, but looking at the temperatures here at home, it was pretty much the same, maybe a degree or two colder in the very early mornings, but we weren't out there then. <laughs> and to be honest, I was in my summer dresses most of the time because I tend to run hot when I'm doing workshops anyway. So, you know, I did take my jacket and wear it when we walked to the city, but that was it. Um, the weather was very, very windy and rainy on Sunday, so a perfect day for us to sit inside and crochet. But other days, Saturday, it was beautiful and clear, beautiful blue skies, beautiful views. The river looked stunning. It was great. So what happens when you go to a retreat? Well, Kylie's retreat, she organises, um, so everybody gets there if they can on the Thursday night, and we have a group dinner. Um, Kylie makes project bags. And she makes a special one for every retreat. Every retreat has its own bag. And those bags are filled with lots of yarny fun. So I think there was white gum wool in these ones and tandy wool. And um, I popped a couple little things in some of mine. And yeah, lots and lots of really fun things in the retreat bags. And Kylie also sells other project bags and um, notions, pouches and all sorts of fun things. And on the Thursday night, we there's a hub. So like a big room where everybody can gather the whole time in the retreat whether you're doing workshops or not before and after oh hello margaret <laughs> margaret was in all of my classes on the weekend <laughs> lovely to see you margaret <laughs> um yeah so there's this big hub where kylie is set up so you go there when you arrive you get your name tag you get your gift bag 
and start to meet all the other people who were there at the retreat. And there's, you know, couches with different places to sit. And there are also a couple of traders who come along to the retreats. And at this retreat, we had Sally and Sally, as well as Kylie, selling their wares. And of course, I purchased things. So let's, let me show you the pretty things first. So first up, I bought this little notebook. That's actually a notebook cover. And this is made, it's wood. It's made out of hewn pine, which is the famous wood, wood you find in Tasmania. Um, yeah, so it's really cute. I do love to write notes. I have so many notebooks. and <laughs> Now I have another one. <laughs> so that was really cute. So Sally from the Yarn Inn, she also stocks my books, which is wonderful. And it was very great for me because I was traveling by plane. I did not have the capacity to bring suitcases full of books for people to buy. So Sally very kindly did that for me. <laughs> Lucky you, darling. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was lovely. And Sally also stocks Bendigo Wool and Mills Wool, yarn and cotton. So <clears throat> if you're in Tasmania and you want to go and have a feel and a squish, then um, Sally is the woman to see. Um, I think she's based in La Trobe. And, yeah, she will help you out no end. She's got all the things you could ever need, knitting needles, crochet hooks, all the notions, all that kind of stuff. So yes, I purchased this from Sally. And the other Sally is um, Sally Ridgeway, and she her business is, well, Sally Ridgeway Designs in Felt and Fibre Tasmania. So Sally hand dyes a lot of yarn, beautiful yarn, as well as, and that's what she had there for display. And I promised myself I wouldn't buy any yarn. <laughs> and then when you get there and it's so beautiful, you can't resist. So this is what I bought from Sally. Um, now in my defense I did look and thought yes I really really like that yarn um, and I went away and I found a pattern that I want to knit and I figured out how much yarn I would need and that's what this is for. So this is just specifically for that project that I want to knit. So what did I buy? Okay yeah, yeah it is blue. Beautiful color. It's still blue. Surprise surprise. Matchy matchy. Um, and I'm going to knit. It's a cardigan and it's um, knit with, this is four ply, so it's 400 metres per 100 grams, and it's pure merino, so it's not super washed, this is the natural fibre. So I've got three of those, but I also have one of these. So this is um, Super Kid Mohair and Mulberry Silk. So there's only 50 grams here, but there's 420 metres, so it's very, very fine. But I'm going to hold this, hold this, strand of this with a strand of this as you knit so it'll be a beautiful hi Sandra beautiful um fluffy warm squishy cardigan when I get there so I will do that I'm currently finishing off my other knit project which is something that I've had on the boil for way too long but I pulled it out on the weekend or the other day whenever and I have I'm not that far from finishing I'm about three quarters of the way through one sleeve I'm just going to do the other sleeve and bind off the do the bottom band and I'm done and then I can start on this beauty. So yay. So that's it. That's my fun time purchases. <laughs> um, and after that, we all sort of gathered, had a bit of a meet and greet. Um, and then we went all had a joint dinner. So everybody in one room, big tables of, I don't know, 10 people or so. And we all, you know, just sit randomly. And you've always got company. You've always got like-minded people to sit with and chat with. And the food was delicious. Really, really yummy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was the first night arriving and getting settled. And Friday we were straight to classes. So um, we did two classes on Friday. Friday morning I did reading patterns and charts where I use my Granny Square Academy book, a couple of patterns from that to teach people why, you know, how to read a written pattern, why everything is in the written pattern. So this is the sample blanket from Granny Square Academy. So we did the, what did we do? We did the solid square, just the regular solid granny square for reading um, patterns. And then I gave people a choice whether they wanted to do the good old circle to square to read the charts, or if they wanted to do the textured um, front posts or back posts, back posts, <laughs> back posts um, stitches. And that was super fun. Everyone did really, really well. 
Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. I'll see you later. Um, everyone did great. There's always people who come, oh, I'll be the one you, you won't be able to teach. I won't understand. I'll be slow. But everybody did absolutely fine. Everyone was awesome. The classes, I always make sure that my classes aren't too full so that I do have time to go around and talk to everybody individually. And if anyone's struggling with anything, it's it's fine. I can get around and do it. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. So, yeah, that was the morning. And then the afternoon, I taught um, my Mayan square. So this is a Mayan blanket. So it's made up of just this one huge square. And everyone, it was a really silent class because, look, it's not a difficult pattern, but you do need to concentrate. So it was just heads down, groceries, everybody was just getting on with it. And I posted a photo on the blog just today, actually, of um, the group shot. The only group shot that I remember to get was of this class at the end, everybody holding up their, their Mayans. This is a sample that I'm making of the Mayan square. I'm using a Bendigo Woolen Mills Bloom. Don't ask me what the colour is. I have no idea. I've long, long, long lost the label. Because um, I first taught this class on a cruise back in 2019, it must have been. Yes, and we went via Bendigo Woolen Mills, and that's where I bought this. And I started this square on that cruise. And then this is just sat in a box. <laughs> <laughs> until this weekend and I picked it up I added a few more rounds as I was walking around talking to everybody so yeah one day this will be a full mind square when I get to it <laughs> and that was really fun um yes so that was Friday Friday night we were left to our own devices for dinner so myself and a couple of other people a couple of other the tutors um Terry and her hubby and um Jess, the sweater collective, came up and we all went out for dinner. Um we just walked across the footbridge, right across the um the river to just a little pizza pasta place and had a lovely dinner. <laughs> it's actually quite funny, it was really, really dark because the sun sets sooner down there. And we were we'd all had, you know, a big day. We travelled the day before, late night, up teaching all day. We were all pretty tired, so we sort of left when we were ready to, you know, after the workshops were done, okay, let's go, it's dark, let's get across there. And we got outside the restaurant, we looked at our watches and it was like 10 past five. <laughs> so, and the restaurant didn't actually start serving dinner till 5.30. It was too early for that. Anyway, we went in, had a bit of a sit and a talk and had our dinner. It was lovely. And then, okay, time to go back. And okay, it must be time for bed. And we, we looked at our watches and it was like seven o'clock. <laughs> So yes, we were we were very very um, early to bed on <laughs> Friday night, but that was good. We needed it after all the excitement that we'd had. Um, so Saturday was all an all day class. So for me, that all day class was called Elevate Your Crochet. So I don't have a sample to show you because we were just making samples. So the morning was mostly devoted to rows, and we were, what we were doing was making small swatches. And testing out different things, testing out different yarns and hook sizes and testing out different ways of doing things. Um, so lovely to see you from all around the world. <laughs> um, and everyone was labelling things and we were getting into the real nitty gritty of the really minute detail of how to make things look a, a lot better. Um, and after we finished with the rows, we went on to doing squares. We started with a basic one and then we tried all sorts of different things. Everybody got to different stages and it was really fun. It was the hard brain work day um, but I think everybody learned some things and yeah now, now have elevated their crochet <laughs> um, Saturday night was another group dinner um, again delicious food we've mixed up the tables sat around where you would sit wherever you want and we did um, another delicious meal and then after dinner this night um, Kylie had organised a charity um, sort of auction thing, a cent auction, like buy a raffle ticket. Um, so all of us, or a few of us, really big tins, like, you know, juice tins, beetroot tins, I don't know. We made a cover, so either knit or crochet a cover to go around it, and then Kylie filled it with all sorts of fun stuff. So, And each of us nominated a charity, and everyone had raffle tickets, and they could purchase more and put them in. <laughs> And at the after dinner, we drew the, the winners of each of those 
that was fun. There was a lot of money raised for all of the charities, which was awesome. And then we had a couple of guest speakers. So we had um, Kylie Boatwright, I think, from memory, talk about her journey to Launceston. She led an amazing life and she's now living a pretty much plastic free life and makes um, beeswax wraps and is a very inspiring lady to listen to. And then um, Bronwyn, oh, her last name is escaping me now, even though I just typed it like a few hours ago. Um, I'm sorry, Bronwyn. <laughs> it's in my blog post that I've put up today anyway. Um, Bronwyn spoke to us all about yarn fibre and classification of yarn fibre and how Merino has very specific um, classifications, you know, super fine, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's very, very interesting, and um, I'm sure we all learnt a lot. And she had lots of samples for us to squish too, which was lovely. And then Sunday, ah, oh, that's it. Thank you, Rowena. Sorry, Rowena. What am I looking? Thank you, Margaret. Rowena Butler was the person who talked to us about all that yarn. I'm so, so sorry for getting that wrong earlier. Um, yes, so Rowena is very knowledgeable and a super lovely lady as well. And um, yes, we learnt a lot. I'm sure. Um, and then Sunday was the last day of the retreat, official day of the retreat. Um, some people needed to leave that morning. Other people hung around for classes and some people had, were day visitors, <coughs> locals. And on that day, we had a super, super fun because we were making Nimue. Well, I say making, we started on Nimue. <laughs> so we made a couple of um, the Kalpa squares and then we started on the centerpiece. And that was a really good way to end off the retreat because everyone could just work at their own pace. There wasn't a lot of, well, you have to learn this technique and really, really complex stuff. It was just everybody working to their own level in a very relaxed manner all day. And that was really fun too. I really enjoyed that. And so much so that I think next time I spoke to Kylie, we're going to actually do that as a two-day class. So just two days of sitting, chilling, relaxing, working on Nimue. You can get a lot done in two days. <laughs> so that'll be really fun. Um, Saturday night, we went out together, the tutors, Kylie, a few other people, and had this amazing dessert at a dessert bar. Oh, my God. Anyway, delicious. It's all about the food. <laughs> That's not all about the food. It's all about the company and the yarn and having a really good time. And I think one of the best things that I don't realise until I get home about going to retreats is... I don't watch the news, I don't listen to it, there's no radio, I mean there's a radio and TV around if you want them, but I don't turn them on, I don't look at anything on my phone, my, my phone is rarely out of my pocket, um, so I kind of have a, it's a real retreat from the world because you know, there's some pretty awful stuff going on everywhere. For everyone, things are tough for everybody, so it's really nice just to be able to let it go for a couple of days and just really enjoy everything to do with yarn. Now, of course, I wasn't the only tutor. There were four other tutors, I think. Yeah. Um, Jess Gore from the Sweater Collective, she was teaching lots of fun things like brioche for beginners and then a tuck stitch, um, seamless patchwork knitting, and I can't remember the other one. I'm sorry, Jess. Might have been another brioche one I can't remember sorry <laughs> um Prue Raymond dear Prue she's known as she was teaching a cardi in a weekend it's knitting so they were using super duper chunky yarn and really big needles and a really interesting construction technique to create these wonderful bright colorful chunky cardigans and a, a lot of people did actually get a cardigan done over the three days so that was really fun fun to watch that see that happen uh now it's terry from terry designs now terry is a crocheter tunisian specialist and she did um, a beginner's tunisian class and then she did a more advanced tunisian class with working on a shawl pattern she did a a giant mandala like you know like hula hoops that sized um themed little diamonds for the retreat that she designed in tunisian crochet um, so, uh, surrounded by something by another thing that sort of fitted onto the hoop very technical words there thing <laughs> um, 
And she also started, they all started work on the last day on that Terry has a design for um, a dress. It starts, you can start it as a top or you can keep going to make it a dress, like using a whirl type pattern. And they all had heaps of fun doing that. And then there was um, Dominique Trad. And Dominique is an amazing woman. And they had a lot of very deep, thoughtful thinking and discussion classes about knitting. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think one was like finding the joy in knitting you know, really figuring out what you like about doing that craft and finding projects that work for you um, and in freeing your knitting, like not being bound up by having to follow things exactly and doing things that suit you. And then she did one, I think the last day that Dominic taught was one on um, finding your shawl shape. Now, I don't know if you have seen many shawl shapes, shawls in knitting, but there's lots of different shapes you can have. And you should have seen the piles that Dominique had of these gorgeous knitted multicoloured shawls and they all had lots of fun trying on and experimenting and yeah, it would have been a fun class to do. <laughs> that's always that's always a downside to teaching a retreat. You always want to do the other classes. But anyway, that's not really a downside. I'm very lucky to do what I do and have that fun. Then Monday morning it was time to have breakfast and jump on the plane and head home again. So it was a fun filled very lovely weekend as i say a real retreat um and i can't wait to do it all again so the next one i'm doing with kylie is in september in the blue mountains at the hydro majestic which is amazing i can't wait to go there and do that and then another one in october at o'reilly's in queensland and then next year barossa launceston again and who knows um, but I now do have on my website a workshops page and down on the um, what's that right hand side for me <laughs> if you're looking on desktop there's a little calendar if you're looking on mobile I'll just scroll to the bottom and I'm, I've got a little calendar there that I'll keep updating with links of where you can go to find out workshops now I pardon me I did just bolt some lunch down before I jumped on here um, Speaking of workshops, I am running some myself in Bendigo after the Bendigo show. Ooh, me too, Tanya. <laughs> um, and they booked out really, really quickly. But, ooh. <laughs> um, I have set, some, one lady has sadly had to cancel, so there is one spot available in my Granny Square Flare workshop at Bendigo, at Bendigo Woolen Mills. So if you are free on, it's the Tuesday after the show, don't ask me the date because no idea. Um, but if you search workshops in my shop, you'll see that there's one spot available left in that, in that Granny Square Flare workshop if you want to come along. Um, what else can I talk about there? I think that's about it. Does anyone have any questions about the retreat and how things work or what happens or anything like that? <laughs> You might be typing it might pop up as soon as I start talking about something else but anyway um, I did want to say that yesterday I finally 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 <laughs> set up all the pre-order and everything for Dottie Spotty so if you've been let me tell you the story of Dottie Spotty back in 2015 I was still working um, in a, another job apart from this at a primary school and one of my work colleagues was you'll have a great time Cindy I'm pregnant, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll make something for her. So I made what I call the Dotty Spotty Baby Blanket. Just five different size circles going square. And I, I used just some neutral colours because we didn't know, boy or girl. Not that that should matter anyway, but it always does. Anyway, I used yellow and green surrounded by parchment and gave that to her and I released it as a pattern back then. And, I mean... That's, what, how many years? Seven years ago now. My pattern writing skills, my publishing skills, my ideas of help in the pattern have all developed a whole lot in that seven, those seven years. And it's still a really popular pattern, and I wanted to remake it. So initially I had the idea, okay, I'm just going to redo it. I'll make a new sample. I'll take more photos. I'll do video. I'll do charts. And I'll just re-release the pattern as it is. So everybody who's already bought it will just get an updated version of the pattern. That was the initial thought. And this is my first thing that I did. I made, this is the baby blanket, the remake that I made. So you can see different size circles. 
Now, the only thing that was different was the, uh, the green that I used initially is now been discontinued. I had to use this brighter green, which I'm still not really a fan of, if I'm honest, but I wanted to recreate what I did originally as best as I could. And so this is it. But then when I was talking to, I gave it all to my graphic designer for her to start making the pretty new PDF. And she said, are we going to do this as a book? And I thought, um, sure, why not? <laughs> so, of course, I wanted, I wanted to include a lot more in a book than just the one pattern. So I have two other colorways done. So we've got this one, which is a random one. So I made this one with 10 ply cotton and the layout, they're still um, five by five squares in different um, different sizes. And I've just done the layout a little bit different. So some of them are completely white. Some have just got a little bit. And I've done a different border on this one as well. So that was one. And then I thought, well, I mean, they're baby blankets. But babies don't stay babies very long. And very soon they're moving on to their big kid beds. So I wanted to make a big kid one. And so I did. So like a single bed size. And this is very generous single bed size. So this is, oops, again with 10 ply cotton. We've got navy and the Bendigo golden glow colour. So the musty colour. But this one is nine squares long by... How many? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven across. <laughs> so with the blue ones I've gone big to small to big, and the mustard ones I've gone small to big. So in the middle, you've got this really big contrast of the big ones next to the little ones. And yeah, so as I was making it, as I said, I made videos, I've done lots of helpful photos. I've got given you three options and ways to do circles as seamlessly as possible. I've got a different border on each one. I have got charts for them all. There's UK and US terminology in the one document now, and not separate one. Um, what else is in there? Lots of hints and tips. Lots and lots. There's joining instructions, border instructions. Um, but there's also a big new section on how to design your own. So I tell you how to work out how much yarn you need. I've got a little worksheet in there so you can fill it out to do that. But one of the fun things is I've got a little colouring sheet. So it's like a big grid of a big grid <laughs> squares and each one has the five different circle sizes in it so that you can have a practice and colour in. You get your pencils out and colour in all the colours that you want to try out different colourways. I've given you other design ideas. You don't have to use my layouts. Um, there's plenty of other things you can do. It's such a versatile pattern. Versatile pattern. I mean, I'm going to go back to this is the pattern from Granny Square Flare. So these circles are all the same size, but the colourways are different. It's just on a diagonal. Um, the colours are have been done. That's the old green colour that I did in the original body spotty pattern. So yeah, as you can see, there's just a million 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 different things you could do so yesterday I finally was able to get it all set up on my shop so if you have bought the original pattern anytime since 2015 to now um, I sent an email with an update to a new version of just that recreating that original thing so there's new I did tweak some of the patterns a little bit to make them a bit more I don't know easy to make I guess um, and fun <laughs> and so there's new versions of the patterns just tweak very slightly there's now charts in it um, what else is there yeah the UK and the US the joining instructions are better um, and the layout plan how to make the blanket so everything is in there that you had originally just the updated and new version and pretty photos and all that sort of stuff as well and with that update there is also a code in there that you can use to take the price you paid for that off the bigger version if you want it so if you wanted to get the book or the digital version of the book you can use this code and you're not going to be any worse off you'll still have the original pattern which is included in the book as well as all the extra information with the videos and things the videos aren't in the original pattern um, oh that's right there's left-handed charts in the book version as well 
That's something else I forgot. So it's not a, it's not a huge book. Um, it's 54 pages. Um, the PDF for the original pattern is like 20 pages, something like that. Um, so yeah, so now I've got three things in my shop that are called Dottie's Body. There's the original, which is just the this pattern. Then there's the, the new improved version, which is the three patterns as well as all the extra help. And they're open for pre-order now. Um, the digital version open for pre-order and the book version open for pre-order. And the book is only available at the moment for pre-order for Australians and New Zealanders because it takes a little while for everything to filter through. But soon, like within a couple of weeks, it will pop up on Amazon and stuff for pre-order if you're elsewhere and wanting to get the book. It's just not feasible for me to post books overseas. It takes too long. It's too expensive, especially for such a small book. It's just not, it's just not viable, not viable for any of my books. But yeah, just, <laughs> you're better off going from Amazon and stuff. Uh, don't see if you want to get to apply the... Okay, can you please delete that message? Um... Oops, that's just a private little thing, Rhonda. Sorry. If you send me an email, we will. Um, I just had to. Yeah, I don't know. I've never had to do that before. Sorry, Rhonda, you won't be able to comment there for a minute. But um, yes, if you send me an email, we will sort that out. <laughs> yes, there we go. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? It probably sounds really confusing, but it makes sense to me if you follow my timeline logic. <laughs> oh my gosh, half an hour already. Uh, does anyone have any other questions about that at all? No? All right, well, so what's next for me? Um, what's next for me is getting ready for the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show, which is in the middle of July. Again, don't ask me dates. 16th, 15th, maybe? I don't know. Um, so I'll be heading up there. I'll have my own stand there um, selling my book. So Dottie Spotty will be with me then. So I, last time I went to the show, I had... Um, ah! <laughs> Yes, I will. Ha I'll talk. To, I'll talk to that in a second, Jess. <laughs> Last time I went to the show, I had Granny Square Flare, Sirens Atlas, Beneath the Surface. No, so the first time I just had Granny Square Flare. That was when I was with Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill, and the next year I had Sirens Atlas, and then twenty. 20 there was no show obviously and that's when granny square academy was out last year um granny square patchwork was out didn't have that either <laughs> so this year i have got i'm gonna have seven books um and i really don't know how the heck i'm gonna get them there <laughs> or even how i'm gonna fit them in my tiny store um so yeah i'm not going to be able to bring copious quantities of quantities of each of them i'm going to have to guesstimate and hope that I have enough of everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you look at a paperback, hardcover, UK, US, so there's four versions of Granny Square Flare and Granny Square Patchwork. There's and Sirens Atlas. <laughs> oh my God. What was I thinking? Anyway, I'll figure it out. Okay, so Jazzy has asked me, am I coming to the Knitters Guild Conference, the gathering in August? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I could, I've actually asked if I can let the secret out yet, but um, I know that Guild members have been notified. So in August, in the Blue Mountains somewhere, I can't remember where, Jazzy, you might be able to fill me in, um, the New South Wales Knitters Guild is having their a gathering, and they've asked me to come along to teach. And I'll be teaching Mayan, Oceanic, and uh, Patterns from Granny Square Flare, I think think <laughs> anyway final details need to be worked out and I haven't added it I put it like to be information to come on my workshops page I just wanted to wait till I heard from them whether I can let you know links and all that sort of stuff so yes that's exciting <laughs> twice in the Blue Mountains in two months so yes Bendigo July Blue Mountains August Blue Mountains September Queensland October and then November is also New South Wales and Queensland and then December, I'm not going to go anywhere. 
<laughs> um, uh, Sarah, you're enjoying Nimby Way on the final journey. What a queen. What a quest. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm, th I'm really thrilled seeing all the Nimby Ways appear in my Facebook group and on social media. It's really good. I'm loving hearing the feedback that you enjoy, the challenging bits with the rest of easy rounds in between. And I can't believe that there are some people on their third ones already. They're just As soon as they finish one, they're starting another one, which is just, it's so nice to me because it it's, means that it's, a, it's an enjoyable pattern. It's not something you just do and, okay, done, never doing that again. That's, that's amazing. So thank you. <laughs> All right, I have been rabbiting on for a very long time. Oh, you finished yours today. I'm so glad you loved it. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, anyway. Excellent. Thank you. All right, well, if there's no more questions, here we go. Will I eventually put more than a Granny Square Books 1 and 2? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Vicky. Um, they were before... They were very early, they're very early designs. Some of the designs in them have made them their way into... Some of them are in Granny Square Flare. Not all of them. There's only about like two or three, I think, from one or two. I don't know. If I went back and did it again, I'd probably tweak the patterns. I don't know. But short answer, I don't know. I already have the book for July next year and the book for the July afterwards in my head that are both going to take that whole year to do. Who knows what's going to happen after that? <laughs> Oh, yay. I hope you enjoy it, Stephanie. Excellent. All right. Does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to wrap it up. I will be doing another live session, but this time in on Instagram in about two weeks. And then I'll do another one here a couple of weeks after that. I'll try and do one a month on each platform because there's different people at different places. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and maybe I'll see you at a retreat one day. Who knows? Thanks very much for joining. I'll see you later. <laughs>